sound is good. All right. For tonight's demo, we have Richard Minio, and he's going to demonstrate his version of making segments to make segmented bowls and put a bowl together for us, or show us how to put bowls together. One of the main reasons for this is since empty bowls and these are curry boxes, very well suited for that. And after he's done, would you please let him clean up before we ask? We want to make sure we have time to get out of get the staff out of here on time. Once he's cleaned up and has all his tools, we have plenty of time for questions and answers. We just want to make sure he gets cleaned up so we can get the thing up around him. All right, Richard? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a segmented bowl turner, and uh, I've seen a lot of demos. They just make it a lot more complicated than it has to be. You don't need a scientific calculator and trigonometry to figure out how to make a bowl once you have a few tricks. So basically what I'm going to start with is a design of a bowl. You can see that, right? Switch that down to the paper. Yeah. This is how I lay out a bowl. I can't even draw good enough to draw both sides, so I use one side of the paper. Qu quarter inch graft. For beads of courage, they want an eight inch bowl, roughly eight, six. I heard a lot of talk tonight. So what I normally do is on quarter inch graph paper, I start four inches off center, roughly seven inches on top. And I just sketch out my bowl. Heck of an artist, right? Then everything, all the spaces are three quarters of an inch. The bottom, of course, is solid. There's nothing to look at there. Now you just space it out in the three quarter inch sections. Simple enough, right? Stay inside the two lines, the three quarter inch pieces. And again, if it's wider than three quarters, you got to make it stop. Like this one, it's going to be screwed. That's going to be a one inch wide board. Easy enough, right? I'll give you that. This gives you the size of your rings. You're working on half of it, so if it's four inches from here to here. It's an eight inch ring. Five inches from here to here is a two inch. Two and a half. Right? You see how simple that is? You're just doing everything in half. And there's your profile for your bowl. Any questions on that? Pretty simple, right? There's no math. Right? Now all you got to do is size your rings. It's a two and a half inch. Why do I have three quarter? Oh, three quarter height. I'm sorry. It's a five inch ring, a five and a half inch ring, a six and a half inch ring, a seven inch ring, and this is what we call the feature ring. You can make this in three pieces since they're all eight inches. You make a nice fancy feature ring there, or you just continue in the same pieces. The more you know, it, it all counts. It's twelve per ring. If it's one solid. Ring like that is 12 pieces. Three pieces is 36 pieces. It just goes up to the bowl, and then, of course, the top is made. Once you have those numbers, you just bring it to the chop saw. The, big, the hardest time I had was figuring out. Now I know I need an eight-inch ring. How long of a piece of wood do I start with? And what size are the segments? So. I come up with this system, and I've got handouts here. They went pretty fast the last time. Can you see that? And uh, my printer didn't have much ink left in it. But basically what you're seeing is this scale on this paper. So once you have your plan, and if I need to make a five-inch ring, 
all I have to do is slide this over to five inch. Hold a piece and chop it. Twelve times, I've got a size that I sell the drum for, five inch ring. Don't get any easier than that, right? Got this. <coughs> That's the way you build it. This is what I run. It's all done in a chop saw. You can set that up on a table saw, a band saw, or even just hand miter it. First ring has to be five and a half. And I like to use multicolors. It's all calculated. As a matter of fact, there's a handout that we sent out, but it's just a JPEG. It's actually an Excel spreadsheet because the other thing that you got to question is if I'm going to make an eight inch ring. How long a piece of stock do I start with? So in that, it gives you all the angles. There's a lot of a lot of the math is in the spreadsheet. But it, but it's just it's just it's just all the math that like you're asking how'd you calculate that out? This one? That's a, no, this is for an eight inch ring. That's the only two drum. Yeah. This is half of it. This is half of it. It's four inches from here, but it makes an eight inch ring. It's two and a half to here, but. You show the radius being eight inches. No, no. Yes. Yeah. It, it, what it is is the diameter. There's no sense in writing the radius down. You need the diameter. Yeah, I thought that bottom one showed from the center out, which would only be four by eight. No, it's saying that from this center out is going to make an eight inch diameter. So why does that? Yes. That that line is the diameter of the bolt. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wait. Let me, here, let me fix that. Wait. 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 Here. This is that's the symbol for diameter. <laughs> okay. Got that. Now I forgot where I was going. Five and a half inch. All the dimensions are diameter. Man, I should have set this up before time. Huh? Well, you're doing all right right there, I guess. I don't know. I think everybody can see this clear enough. It's a, it's a chop saw. There's nothing magic about it. Twelve segments. Yeah, all the, all the math and the, and the angle is based on twelve segments. That's the number I work with. Yeah, and, and there's reasons for it. It's less math. It, it, it's a it's a round number. You 
You see me holding these pieces. That other one, you don't use your fingers. 15 degrees. Normally when I run bowls, when, when I was really making them, I just fill a five-gallon bucket full of segments and grew them up. Yes, and, and yeah, good point. That is the difference in the, in the spreadsheet I handed out. This is called flipping it. It loses less material. Non-flipped in that calculation means I'm going to cut every one in the same direction. In other words, if I laminated the back of this and I want it to be the outside of the ring, then it's non-flipped. You're always using this for the outside of the ring. It consumes a much longer piece of stock. Good question. You're supposed to stop the saw before you let it come back out of the wood. But I've done this enough. Uh -huh. yeah. I think I just cut the wrong board. That's all right. Eight inch rings. Yeah, what's the next one? This 80 tooth. 80 tooth Freud. Mm. What did you just say? Huh? Tell us what you just said. Six and a half. Next ring up. Six is difficult when you only have five fingers. But that's it. I mean, you get the point of it. You, once you have it scaled, you just write down how, what size rings you need. Might as well cut the eight, right? I pre-cut some. Ah, I guess I need a seven as well. And I don't want to mix my pieces up. takes three eighths, but I'll just do one eighth for tonight. We're not going to make a whole bowl.
All right. That's enough for that. You get the point, right? And again, like I said, I love my fingers, but I've cut enough of those. So I can get my hand close. This one is worth, yeah, this one has a finger saver on it, so when you slide this in, you can actually hold that. Because that's what everybody was worried about the last time I did the demo. I'm not getting my finger that close to the blade. So I incorporated that little piece in it. <laughs> yeah, everybody was the last time. I'm not trying that. But that's easier, to me, it's easier than a table saw. I do it with a table saw as well. And as you can see, it's just a piece of laminate that you get from Home Depot. It's just cut out for a sink. So I got a screw up. I'm sorry? Always make sure you got the right amount of pieces in there. And everybody I've shown how to do these, you get these clamps at Master McCall. You always want to dry fit it, but I know my saw is cutting straight. Excuse me? Any glue. And Really, you can want, if you want to use CA glue, whatever you want to stick them together with, it doesn't matter. What I argue to everybody is the end grain really doesn't hold nothing together. You're not going to glue two by fours together an end grain to build a house that's not doing nothing with a bowl. This has no strength to it. All this does is hold it together long enough, put the next ring on, and tie the pieces together. Uh, yeah, that uh, Gorilla Glue. <laughs> Definitely don't want to play with that. Yeah. Yeah. Now I've seen people just glue these pieces together and be done with it, not even put it in a clamp. I like using the clamp. It's the way I started doing it, and I've always done it. But it, it, it's really simple. I mean, it, I've seen people demonstrate this and they make it sound like you got to be a professor to calculate how to make a ring. It's not that easy. This is what I like about this ring, these type of clamps. McMaster car. McMaster Carl, C A R, M M C M A. McMaster Carl. They sell all kinds. It's like a Granger. Excuse me. Yes, it's all online. That's that ring. What I do to keep everything clean is just keep a plastic bag with a towel in it. Wipe everything off. Set that aside. Try to speed this up. Uh, show and tell went a little longer tonight. No. No, I don't 
don't put any extra work in it. I'm showing, trying to show you how complicated it is. It's, it's not. It's really simple. Yeah, not, not, not the little cheaper ones that come with the saw. You've got to at least use a carbide blade. Just give yourself a fighting chance. I've never seen a demonstrator get asked so many questions. This is pretty cool. <laughs> now, I'm just trying to show you it's not that complicated. We're not turning in enough feeds of courage bowls, and every time I talk to somebody, they oh, that, I don't have the math skills for that. There's no math involved. No. No, again, this joint does nothing. This is the one that holds them together. All this does with me is, and I'm, I'm going to use a sander in the lake tonight, but normally I just pass them under a, a little drum sander. I've got a 1624 drum sander. And like I said, this is my way of doing it. There's a, there's a million ways to add that down. This way, yes, you have to invest in a clamp. I saw Dick's demo, and he just glues the pieces together, gets half a ring done, and then sands it. Whatever works. Yeah, <laughs> not not all the time. Uh, I'm in, I'm impatient. Yeah. The the right way to do this is to let it dry overnight. But I'm gonna start chucking them up and turning them real quick today. So that's enough to get the point across. No, because the, the, the piece that I grabbed is not the same size. You got, you, can you see that? They're not even the same thickness. So there's nothing to nail, there's nothing to nail down. What, when you ha use the wood the same size, you can use this size. But uh, there's an eighth of an inch difference in the thickness of this board. We're not going to do that tonight. Another thing, I glued the top up just to show you. I talked to several segmented turners. They never had issues with this. But again, think about it. All you're doing is gluing egg grain between your segments. If you don't put two pieces, it's going to crack. This, this will split. So even if I make a single layer, I'll go ahead and resaw this and glue it together. So I've got something breaking that seam. Draw like I did and buy a twelve hundred dollar sander or a piece of plywood and a disc and get it off to Remember I said you can't rechuck. I think you can get it close enough. I've cut ugly wood. I mean, it, it, the wood I put on my chop saw is almost makes the shape of an S. I just get it close. Which one is 
Like I said, you wait 24 hours and let that dry. Put it on. Wear a mask and your safety glasses. You see that? That's pretty good. That's some sorry lumber. This is eighty. Oh, that's fine. Eighty grit. We had a uh, somebody from Woodcraft come up here and say that the closest you need to put a finish on a piece of wood with is 100 to 220 grit. And I remember Ken laughing at that. I use micro finishes. But for gluing pieces together, anything works. Yeah. The rougher it is, the better. Give the glue something to bite into. Huh? No. Nope. And again, uh, if you're going to make a masterpiece, kill yourself. Go ahead and tear it up. But Buy my jig, you won't you won't have that problem. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, I should have checked this lumber before I made these pieces. Better than I thought it did. Except for the dust that it throws at you. Wear, wear a mask. <coughs> That's a cheap sander. It's the first time I tried that. Worked pretty good. Here's another little lazy man's trick I did. I turn the bottom. Because if you don't do this, you're going to have to take your whole bowl and make a jam chuck to contour the bottom of it. And I make a little plug to put in it, and I'm done. So this is the last time this comes out of the chuck. I said I wasn't going to do any turning tonight, but I got to treat myself. And that's why I glued this ahead of time, because I got to put some muscle behind it to square it up. No. But I've had these after time, and they have come apart. They'll just crack. That's why I like everything. I was going to have to put in the bottom. I didn't bore this one too good. Oh. 
turn, but hello. You see how bad off that is? See why nothing really matters. I mean, you're just tr you're doing all the truing in the lace. And I made a little targeting head. Of course, I put it on a taper, but you can actually, if you don't have the funnel end, you can actually put this right on the, the large center. If you notice, I put pencil lines on here. You really don't have to have them, but you can actually match up your pencil lines. I'm doing this with the clamp on, which I don't normally do. seeing the pencil marks. Yeah, plus you got a bullseye ring on the board. Stuff it snug it up. Probably biting by now. It is probably ready to open up. The beauty about segmented bowls is you don't need a hollowing jig. I turn the ID as I build them up. I'll go three or four rings and then I'll turn. Yeah. Oh, 15 minutes when you're doing a demo. <laughs> These guys in the front seats going, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, we got to get the screw for this leg. This one, I just use the ring below it. Normally, I take have the clamps off when I do this. But here are the time constraints. Yeah, well, I'm lining this one back up with the first one. This one. Yeah, well, if you looked at this, looks like that. So it's holding the ring center. Is that what you're talking about? <coughs> Run out? Yeah. Yeah, it's a toggle. Is that what you're referring to?
No, I'm centering it in on this target in here. This has the same lines on it. Yeah, I can see that it's the high points touching all around the center. Can I answer your question? Oh, that, that's to line up the colors. You, you, in a, in the perfect world, you want a line to be in line as you go up the bowl. If it's off, only a bowl turner. The kids, the sick kids that we give these boxes to are not going to say, "You got that crooked." <laughs> they match the car. Well, there's nothing more to this, really. I mean, you can see what's done. You just continue off from here. And what I would do is just the same way I turned the base, I would face off this ring. So you don't want to just keep stacking them up eventually unless you run them through, like I do, a, a drum sander. You're, you're pushing them against the sanding disc they're not really parallel anymore. So after you put two or three on there, you want to go ahead and face them off just like I faced the bottom. You can if you want to spin it. I mean, with the. Okay, I'm running out of places to put my junk. Yeah, I mean, you can. Like this, where you can just put it against the block and sand it. Yeah. No, it won't. Tr it won't true it up. Yeah, it, it's going to dance on you. The easy, the way I do it is I just poke a square blade through it. A lot of people using the easy tool, you just scrape it through. I should have glued up a couple more rings, but I'm done. And of course, out of the scrap, you make the, the handle part, so everything looks segmented. Ash, and I don't know what. It's some sort of walnut, but I tell you what, I'm going to hate turning it because I should have showed you the bottom. It's just the forcing a bit that I ran in there, it gouged it up. I, I'm pulling out scars an eighth of an inch deep, just running the forcing a bit. It, and my tools are sharp. It's just, it's just a real rough wood. It's not nothing I would select it for my first bowl, that's for sure. But that is it. And what I didn't point out on this, you still up on the top here? Hit, hit the top. I'm glad the only problems we're having tonight are video. Uh, what do you mean it won't work? You can still cut them, but you need to calculate back. No, the this, this scale will not. That's what I'm saying. Well, I did this one, which is the opposite. I'm adding in wood. How can I possibly make this ring the right size if that won't work? So all I have to do is subtract that, thi that thickness. If I'm going to make an open segment in bowl and I know I'm going to have a quarter inch gap, what do I have to do? Make the, make the ring? Huh? Oh, no, it's a totally different construction. Yeah. But you can use a chop saw to cut your segment. Anything else? I think that's stuck pretty tight. Man, we've got to put a screw in this thing. And that's it. 
And what I would do is carve this out and face this off. I think it's, I don't know, it might be dry enough to try it. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I mean, th this is the beauty of a segmented bowl. Is everything is just short. I don't. I'm not poking inside this bowl to turn it. I'll turn all this true. And face this off, because I didn't. I didn't even sand this side. And you see how easy it is to face it off, and just stack it up. No, I leave a little meat on the outside. And if you look at this, you do have a problem point here with, with the way I laid this out. I'm coming really tight. You want to make sure your, your stock covers this area. So for the first time you do it, rather than cutting three-quarter by three-quarter, cut three-quarter by seven-eighths stock. And, and then you got more to play with. Uh, it depends on. It depends on what I'm left with. I'll cut the outside, and if it's an eighth of an inch bowl, it's an eighth of an inch bowl. If it's a quarter inch, it's a quarter inch. Quarter inch is what you want to target for. That's what I've got drawn out here. And the top, of course, is the same thing. I don't know if anybody can, everybody can resaw, but what, all you'd want to do on your top is tear it. So you would put another part on the top of this to get that same effect where you're not just relying on end grain joint. Make sense? Just put another ring on top of it and hold it together. Because they do crack. I've talked with several people. They said, no, I have not had the issue. I've got several bowls. I've been doing this since 2004. I got the bottoms cracking out of bowls. They must use a different glue, a super glue, or maybe they're matching woods with the same grow rate, but it doesn't work for me. I get cracks. Any other questions? That's oh, yeah, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, well, you can tell I'm off, but normally all I do is put a piece of tape on one side or the other, depending on which side it's off. So you cut the first ring, and if it's got a gap to the inside, like that, you would put a piece of tape on the outside. A piece of masking tape, just figure that it's going to multiply that times 12. It, it doesn't, you don't need that much. Just thinking, you got a 15 degree segment. If you're off one degree times 12, you're, all, you're, you're actually leaving a square segment in your ring. So it does add up. But that's the adjustment is, this pulls into the table, so to, to balance it up, you just put a little piece of tape to compensate for the, the first time you penetrate through. That's why I don't cut through this. I'll, I'll cut, I'll set the sword of 15 degrees and cut that. I'll put the pins in. These steel pins go into the lineup, pins in the, the jig. And then I minor adjust it to close. And the one you really tell, I don't know how good you go, this is the one you can tell. If you're off a half a degree, these rings are not even going to show it. This is the one that really looks ugly. But you can see how tight it is. That's not been sanded. I like it. That's the way I do it. And like I said, I, I can fill a five-gallon bucket with segments in no time. You, yeah, you just cut right on the edge. When you come down with the saw blade, you can see it there, right on the edge of it. Correct. You don't want to cut 15 degree and then turn this back to 90 and cut it because then you will be sanding your blocks. Right now, the, when you make this first cut like here, that's zero clearance. 
so you're not tearing that wood out when you cut through it. That's why they cut so clean. I mean, you come up here and feel these, they're, they're not, they don't need to be sanded. Yes, well, and, and zero clearance. Even a cheap blade, as long as you got the wood, the grain backed up, it doesn't tear out. And everybody, if you're going to get into it, if you're going to get onto a sled or a chop saw, this works on both. It just gives you a, a reference scale to make a ring. So, yes, by all means, gather that up on your way out. What I do when I first got that one, and that to me, that's the best saw out there. I got that at Costco for $69. It was a mistake. It's a $160 saw. I said, for that price, I need another saw. I love it. I got rid of my other saw. This one, is, it's, it's pretty sound. And what I did was just cut at 15 degrees, measured it, adjusted it as, as tight as I could. Then when I put this in there, I cut the rings, and I just had a little piece of tape behind it. No, I, I move it, and I'll, I'll change it now. If I'm going to cut a straight 90-degree cut, I'll take this out and cut. Oh, yeah, it, 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 ain't that, it indexes right back to it. And these little plugs, I didn't tell you that. Oh. <laughs> All you do is chuck this up in the lathe put a piece of wood in there and turn it to that OD. And it makes the perfect plug for the bottom. And see now, all I gotta do is turn this bowl and I never have to touch the bottom, the bottom's done. And I pull this out, I put the plug in it, I never have to touch the bottom. That was my biggest challenge, on, cause I started on a little 10 inch lake, turning it over and trying to make a jam chuck to hold this, and I, I was, constantly glue up segments because I send it flying and then try to figure out how to glue the pieces back together again. So there's got to be a way of doing that bottom. Do the bottom first. Anything else? It's, it's, it's not as complicated. I mean, is there anybody that hasn't turned the segmented bowl that thinks this is really complicated? It's, it's simple. It really is. It's, even if you can't draw. Like I said, I draw half a bowl. I can never get the other half to look the same. I don't have to. I just do one side. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, well, here's a feature ring. That's like an Egyptian. Yeah. That's a simple feature ring. And all that is is you would cut. Which is why you need to know how long a piece to start with. Because some of my feature rings are really complicated, and it's taken 80 inches to make an 8-inch ring. And I wind it up with like 79 and 3 quarters. You're dead in the water. Uh, but you, you would take like a thin strip of this, say a 1-8 piece of this, and you would glue it on to this. And you would, these would be, every time you flip it now, you got it on the top, you flipped it, it's on the bottom, flipped it, it's on the top, flipped it on the bottom, and you subtract that same material from the length of your segments. It, it's a, this is the, one of the simplest feature rings. The other one, the, the zigzag, uh, if you do it the opposite way where I turn this veneer to the outside and you turn it, these actually become round dots. The drawback to that is I learned that the hard way, is you have to be perfectly center. If you're a 16th off center, out of true, when you turn it, you got a one inch circle here and a half inch circle here. Looks kind of funny as they get bigger and then smaller, unless you like that kind of stuff. Cut what, I'm sorry. It's all the same. It, this is cut out of the same strip, the same strip that I make this out of. <coughs> Doesn't matter. 
It really doesn't matter. Right now, you can see it's long grain orientated this way. But it really doesn't matter because no matter how you orientate that, if you notice the segmented bowls, even the same piece side by side doesn't look like it came out of the, the same piece of wood. Yeah, the tin roof. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. You was my biggest heckler. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Pizza cake. No, you've got to do it. Thank you, just try it. Like I said, grab a, one of these samples, make a sled for your table saw, your, even if you have to make a little handheld miter box to cut it at 15 degrees, try it. it, it segmented bowls is fun. I make genie bottles, it's not just a bowl, a dish, a box, simple. Thank you guys. <laughs>